You positive heads, welcome to a very special episode dedicated to none other than you, the pea heads themselves. I am your pea head enthusiast and hostess for the day, Alexa Hauser. I have been blessed to have the experience of helping out with Positive Head social media for the better part of a year. And through my digital interactions, I began to realize, as did Brandon, that we have some incredible beings listening to the show who are taking the information that Brandon puts out through the podcast and using it to transform their lives and create wonderful things. You listeners are all a huge, huge part of the life force that propels this show forward through time and space and we think it's time to bring forth some of you beautiful reflections and delve a little deeper into this collection of energy that is the positive head community so as we shine the spotlight on our listeners what we'll have them do is share their stories of how they attracted positive head into their life the transformation it's facilitated for them and what they're focused on creating now that they're in a more positive head space Also, this episode of the Positive Head Podcast is being brought to you thanks to the support of Gaia. If you're not familiar, Gaia is the go-to source for streaming consciousness content online. And you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com slash Positive Head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com slash Positive Head. Check it out. Hello, all you positive heads. On this week's P Head Posse episode, our guest is positive head listener Jonathan Osorio. Jonathan is a music producer and DJ who lives with passion, acts with love, and reacts with compassion. Spreading positive ripple effects to further the evolution of humanity, he believes in healing the mind through the body by creating a healthy lifestyle. Hi, Jonathan. Welcome to the show. Good morning, Alexa. How are you? I'm I'm doing well. How are you? Doing great. Good, good. Yeah, I'm excited to to have this conversation and connect because I know you, you know, you have a lot of um you have a lot of good insights and actually the way that the way that we got you on this the show was you made a, a comment on Instagram that that Brandon um the regular host of the show saw and loved so much that uh, he, you, he basically fast tracked you to uh, to be on this segment. So I was thinking, you know, you have some, you, you got some magical uh, manifestation powers going on over there. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah, something like that. So, do you want to, um, you know, give us a little bit about a little bit of your story and how you know you, you what you've been doing up until this point? Yeah, for uh, for the last year, I would say like around this time maybe producing making music working uh as a diesel mechanic and then going through the process you know feeling emotions and then feeling maybe this is not for me like the dj career mm. overcoming some obstacles letting it go uh to go more in detail will be i came to a point where i didn't feel that what i was doing with music was good for me in a way mm. Mm-hmm. By creating the space for for drugs and alcohol use, you know, I have nothing against it. Just the the fact that music, electronic music, what I love, provides the space for that. And after that, anything could happen under the influence, you know, accidents, uh, fights, whatever. I just did not like that, and uh, so I let it go. I started to pursue something else, trying to find its meaning in my life, I guess. And I uh, went through some experiences. And got into a depression, yeah. Mm. And from then, really flipped my side, my life, like totally, like different. Eating healthy, I got sick um, from uh, working too much, not eating right, not sleeping right. You know, working day job, producing at night, DJing weekends, and mm. that was not healthy. And Sounds very familiar. <laughs> I I ended up 
getting uh like parasites in my in my body from uh fast food oh wow and that's when i began the journey of healthy eating and realizing that by eating like plant-based foods you could hear your mind as well mm. so that's when that journey began and by doing so by sticking to that diet uh this is what the doctor said um they gave me some medicine i did a cleanse and if you feel good eating how you used to before you could eat that if you don't then don't eat it so right. that's what i did i started feeling i felt good but then eventually i would feel parasites is it's not like from conversations before it's not like worms right it's not like that it's just parasites are what are in processed foods and they feed off processed foods and when plant-based is introduced into your system they don't know what to do because they that's not what they eat so in a way plant-based um defeats attacks parasites and you get rid of it that way mm. and without the nutrition of plant-based foods they eat they keep on recycling and then so i did it very drastically it was one week one week to the other week one week like junk food and the other week straight plant-based and that's not the way to do it so it started affecting me physically and like pain so that's when i did the cleanse and all and little by little not by choice but by not desire i started eating healthy first meat was not something i wanted then chicken i was just like oh like i just don't want chicken you know mm-hmm. and then came eggs and and cheese well cheese was one of the first and fish which i love i love ceviche <laughs> yeah and uh so you know little by little and then as i let it go and continue my life i felt the effect and my body feels amazing it feels light and as i go through the process of transformation of learning more about myself and healing thinking positive mm. i have many breakthroughs throughout the day and eating healthy helps in a big way to achieve those breakthroughs and commit to them to be the person I want to be and be able to shift when necessary and notice it. And that's the main, main purpose of healing the mind through the body. Yeah. Well, I have a question about that because, um, you know, there was like, I forget when it was, it might've been a year ago. It might've been six months ago. I don't know. Time is flying. So I can't really keep track of time, but there was a period of time within the past year where I had that, those same feelings. I was like, I had this strong urge to stop eating meat, like all kinds of meat um, and just be, kind of go vegetarian. Like suddenly meat just like weirded me out and I just didn't like the idea of it. And so anyway, I, I went, you know, vegetarian for about two weeks. And at the end of the two weeks, I was feeling so ill Um And I realized I was anemic, like, because I had no, you know, I wasn't getting certain nutrients, nutrients that I needed to get. And I think it was through a guest on this show, Sahara Rose, who we had, who wrote the intro, like the, the best-selling book on like Ayurveda. And when I heard her interview, she was talking about how, you know, there, there are three types of uh um people in in ayurveda there are three types that you can fall into and they're like w- one of the types is like someone who's really up in their head they can't really go um they can't really go straight vegetarian because they need grounding like they're so in their head that they really need grounding and i feel like that's that's me i mean i don't know if that explains it but what do you do you think that you know plant-based a plant-based diet is for everyone or like because i have strong desires to move to that but i keep getting scared because of what i went through when i cut it all out or do you think it's a process of like slow slow elimination it's slow elimination for sure and Mm -hmm. it's your choice if it's not your choice you're doing it for some other reason it's not going to really work because and to be honest i still have desires like that desire would be i guess that's something, you know, I talked about on that, I wrote on the post, attachment to emotions, mm-hmm. which would be, I'm attached to the emotion I felt when I used to eat meat. Mm-hmm. I'm attached to the emotions that I would get when I would go to the spot and buy ceviche, because that's where I would go with my dad. 
yeah. you know, it's, it's a, it's an emotion that I'm attached to. Yeah. And actually this, this was something that came up in December. Um, my mom, she, uh, she has cancer mm. and she got really sick to the point to go to the hospital. And the reason being was she was not sticking to her diet mm -hmm. because it's tempting. It's tempting to go back and to eat what you used to eat, even though, you know, the reason she was staying healthy is because of the plant-based diet she had. Yeah. And so I had a conversation with her about how we as humans are evolving. We're in 2018, not 1900s. And as much as I miss her cooking as well, like eating like some Costillas con salsa verde and arroz. I don't know how to say it in English. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. To me. But yeah, it's delicious. And like, that's like my favorite dish from her. And like, I realized that it's not, speaking for me, I guess, it's not really, it's a new age. So a lot of things got to go. And yeah. that's one of them. And it's just the mind state of like how we change clothes, change, change styles, mm -hmm. change, um, desires goals like this changes to food and actually something that brandon speaks about on that is it 90 day challenge something like that yeah or it might be 60 day of 60 day of bringing down the walls of your eating habits mm -hmm. it's the same as i was saying like your personality um you want to change it you want to grow you want to be different everything has to be reconstructed yeah yeah um, you know, it's making me think of something that I've been struggling with lately or kind of just, uh, going through is, um, you know, my relationship with marijuana, um, because just what you're saying about food and, and our relationship with it and the familiarity of it and, um, you know, missing it. It's like, that's kind of what I'm starting to go through right now with marijuana, where it's like been a big part of my life at night for the past uh man for several years like several years it's just been a big part of my life at night at the end of the day you know um as a way to relax as a way to hang out as a way to feel you know um less resistance as a way to help me sleep right and recently it's something that i'm like i don't really want to do this anymore i want to be clear i want to be able to just go to sleep i i don't i don't and i've been asking myself this question of like what what is this filling for me? Like, clearly this is filling some sort of just the way we can use food in that same way. It's like, you know, we can get really used to eating a certain like sweet or a thing that we're, we technically don't want to eat, but it feels good in our, you know, it feels good to get that and, and use that to fill some sort of a hoid or a hoid, a hole or a void. Right. Um, and, um, and it's, it's just so interesting to me because it's like I'm in it right now and I, I'm trying to really observe like what am I feeling before I feel compelled to do this every night? Like what is it that this is substituting for me emotionally, right? And so it's interesting to think about, you know, whether it's food or something like marijuana or some, you know, uh some sort of drug or even TV or, you know, um, it's like that we are constantly trying to kind of like fill these holes inside of us. And it's like, not until we get down to like, what is that? What are we actually asking for that? We can kind of move beyond that, that thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that too, with the marijuana last year, I would do it, smoke every night. Yeah. And I feel that I've had that throughout life. Mm -hmm. Like I've been able to notice that. And it's, you know, I guess I would go in a drastic way. I don't know how to describe it. So I get introduced to something and I do it. Like I, I want to play basketball. I play it every day. Like, yeah. It consumes my time. Yeah. You know, I can introduce the weed. I want to do it every day. And it's just a drastic one. And then eventually I'll find my balance. Yeah. And it's the, the weed first came. I just picked it up, decided to do it like January 1st last year. 
Mm. Like I would do it, but not like on a regular. That would buy it. So then I started purchasing it and doing it every night and listen to music and relax and that. And little by little, I didn't want to listen to music. I was just be with me and in the front, like in nature. Mm-hmm. And then little by little, I will smoke less and less and less. And then it came to a point. I was like, I felt this feeling of happiness. I was like, wow, this is. I cried. I was just like, this is. And it brought back memory when I was a kid. And I was just like, that's happiness. Like what happened through this time from, let's say like six years old to 28 mm. school happened, society happened, all this. And I'm just like, you know, we, we, um, I get to notice it and I get to work on it and this, this level of happiness, I want to achieve it without this. Yeah, definitely. And that's been my process ever since. And I feel that I have. As of today, you know, June 28th, I feel that I'm really happy, truly happy with myself and I love myself. Mm. And this is something that Positive Head Podcast had a lot of influence in me. Mm. And achieving that and main- sustaining it. Sustaining it is the hard part. <laughs> yeah. Like Brandon yeah. says, it's a daily conscious effort for sure. I mean, I use this podcast too, just like everyone else. It really like if I if I listen listening to it in the morning, really really sets my day right. So I so I'm with you. On that that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. How did you? How did you? Yeah. How did you come across it? Like, what led you to find it? The podcast. Yeah. Well, I was also did um it went hand in hand with this other. As you call it a training workshop, personal growth program called Leaders in Transformation. And one of the one of the people in there, actually my buddy in the whole in the whole journey of that, she I was into I was attending a university for holistic practice at the time. And she sent me this this uh, podcast. You guys interviewed a holistic doctor. Mm. And she goes, um, check this out. You might like it. And I said, yeah, I liked it a lot. Ended up dropping the school. And it wasn't because of the podcast, but uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it had a lot of insight. And then I was like, this is really interesting. This is a whole new world. It didn't even exist. And like, okay, not even a new world, but people like me. <laughs> yeah. And, and then I got hooked. And then there's a community. And there's, I was like, wow, I was like, this is kind of saying everything I ever always thought. And they don't feel that alone anymore. Mm, yeah, it's it's kind of amazing how strong this community has become and how quickly yeah. it's building. Like I, I'm I'm on an admin on the Facebook group, and it's like I get to see how many people are requesting to come in a day, and it's like it goes from you know maybe one a day, a couple a day to I just looked and there was nine requests from this past day, and I was like, wow, like people are starting to mm. you know really wake up and and listen to this and and take this seriously and want to be a part of it so it's yeah it's really awesome so well that's cool well also do you want to um do you want to mention you know since i since i mentioned it at the top of the interview um you know the comment that you, you the instagram post and the comment that you made about money that uh, caught Brandon's eye and, you know, like I said, kind of fast tracked you to this, uh, to this mm-hmm. interview. Um, cause it, just to give everyone context, uh, Jonathan was commenting on an episode that Brandon did mm-hmm. a couple weeks ago now about money and about the nature of money when another, uh, another listener had kind of commented in the group and asked, why is it okay for Brandon to look to get more money? And, and it brought up this whole topic of money, which is a pretty, um, I think it's one of the topics that's pretty confusing for people Mm -hmm. in, in the spiritual community because it seems so inherently bad, but, uh, but, but anyway, so (laughs) Jonathan, what, what was your take on that? It's pretty big comment. I'm, I just yeah. pulled it up. Okay. Uh, so I guess the, as I put it, it has me thinking of how something can be used for different purposes. The same money can be used for war. The same money can be used to build communities and heal the world. Mm-hmm. It is all how we use it. This applies to everything in life and how water can be used for bad or good. Also fire, 
love, medicine, guns, governments, religion, and music, and the list goes on. Mm-hmm. It, it is all in the context it is used in. Even if it all is done for good, it can be viewed as bad. You know, human nature limits us from abundance. When I was able to detach myself from worldly possessions and human emotions and see myself as one with myself and my spirit, I'm able to see that nothing is mine. Nothing in this world belongs to anyone. We choose what we create. Letting go of all my past beliefs and habits is liberating. Mm. Wow. How do you do that? <laughs> How do you... Detach? Yes. <laughs> it's all positive heads. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. You guys had somebody speaking about this a while back, a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Speaking about nothingness that nothing is ours. Like we come into this world and it, it got pretty deep. And it, it, I got into a point. I was like, wow. Like, so what is, why are, what are we doing? Like, I was able to shift out of that and create something positive. Just, yeah, nothing is ours. Mm, wow. Like, believe in it. Nothing is art. That's like ours. Like it's oh, nothing is ours. ours. I thought you said nothing yeah. is art, and I was like, that's kind of true. Like yeah. the nothingness is art, um, but yeah. nothing is ours. Yeah, nothing is so, ours. Go ahead. So yeah, the we, I, I, you know, human nature limits us from abundance because you know, world possession. So the money could get you a house, so you could live, not die in a way. Uh, so you know, there's an attachment to that we created it. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we got into agreement. This is $1 and this, this purchase is this much. You get more of these dollars. You could buy more of this, et cetera. And the same money can be used for war and bad and good. And the, the comment, you know, I understood where the guy was coming from about, you know, the no need for money, but then, uh, Brandon's, view on this was very powerful on how he wants to defeat money with money. Mm. Mm-hmm. The He wants to I get to a point where when he's going to buy food, he's going to have to borrow money because he used it all. Mm-hmm. And that's powerful. <laughs> or, yeah, yeah, totally. But or where yeah. it's like, you know, Eventually, we're see the way I see what's going to happen with money or what I feel is going to happen with money is that eventually we're going to get to a place where we are such powerful manifestors. Like we are so powerful in our manifestations that money is literally going to be irrelevant because we create that as a permission slip to um, to allow into our life certain things we want. Right. So like if we want a really mm-hmm. nice car. Right. We say, okay, well, I need X amount of dollars to get that car. Um, And we accept that as reality and as a fact. So then we work really hard or we find a way to get the money, right? And then we go and we exchange that money for the car and we go, oh, now I have this car. Awesome. But it's like what we don't see right now, what we don't realize all the time or most of the time is that uh, we're actually creating that car. Like we're manifesting that car the same way we're we're manifesting the money so that we can manifest the car. But the money is just the excuse to manifest the car. So in actuality, once we all become like really, really confident and really, you know, powerful in our our creator beingness, right? I feel like we are just going to be able to actually manifest whatever we want, like out of the air. Like we will create what we want because that's what they apparently do on other planets already. They're much more advanced than us. And that's what they already do. You know, that's what you can do in the astral realm. And that's what, you know, so I feel like we're on the road with money to um, to get rid of money. Yes. But because money is just an excuse, like money is just some something we've created in order to put a barrier between us and our creations, if that makes sense. Or that's what I feel. It, it makes total sense. And I believe also it's part of growth and evolution. Like it's a, it's a process, you know, we, we need this right now to realize what we realize now. And that reminds me of what you speaking about that, about nothing, like Mm. it's it's coming, I guess, to put myself to, to share with the listeners, 
it, I got to a point, I was in a car going to San Jose. And I was like out in the middle of nowhere. And then this, I was listening to this podcast then, that specific episode. And when he said, you know, nothing, like he got really, he got me. I was in the car. I pictured that. Like I wasn't really sitting there. So my body was there, mm. but I was in the middle of like time and space mm. where nothing was mine. I did have clothes on. You know, I had a notebook that I was writing stuff on. Yeah. Um, I have a car, but it's not mine. Like that was the mind state I was in. Mm. And to be in that, in that place that I was at, it felt kind of depressing coming back. It's mm. like, oh, I have this close. <laughs> like they're they're closed you know i get it and you speaking about how at a point we got to create yeah this is a a process we're going through yeah. it, uh leverage not leverage uh gateway i don't know the word yeah maybe you could help me out like uh like well it's like are you coming up for another term for like a permission yeah like, it's not a permission, like a baton. Like, yeah, we gotta, we gotta pass this level. We pass this level. Now we know what to do. Right. Uh, yeah. Like another step or stage or phase. Yeah. Of- so money was necessary because yeah. that's the best we could create yeah. after like trading gold and iron and stuff. Then, you know, money was more efficient, but then we realized, wait, we could create what we want to create. So we're headed towards that. Yeah. Kind of like how I believe to like, hallucinogenics and um we like it is to help us achieve this state some people that haven't achieved it on their own mm-hmm. just like money is to achieve to what we can manifest yeah you know what uh, just popped into my head as you were saying that i i saw like a, even another level to it it's like in a way we should be grateful we should be appreciative of money I mean, in many ways, we should be appreciative of money because that's the key to our prosperity, I think. But in a way, we should actually look at money as, hey, thank, thank, thank the universe that this is here, that we've created this right now, because if if money wasn't here, money basically gives us more time to align with what we want because the reason right now, like Abraham, I listen to a lot of Abraham Hicks and Abraham always says, um, you know, one day, instead of having these manifestation seminars where we talk about how can I manifest this? How can I manifest this? One day in the not so near, in the not so distant future, you know, we're going to be having seminars on de-manifestation, like because people are going to be reaching that level and actually be manifesting whatever they think about. And it's like, you know, people are going to manifest like multiple cars that they don't know what to do with. Like, so it's like in a way this money, right, is a, it's like a baby gate or something. It's like a step to that. And it's helping us practice. It's helping us practice what we want and to focus on what we want. Because once we, you know, get to a certain level, it's like whatever we focus on, we are going to bring into existence and it's going to come faster and faster and faster. So in a way, this money is like a buffer that helps us ask ourselves, well, do you really want to bring that into existence? Is that really what you want? Is it? Because if so, then you have to give up this much energy, right? This much money energy. And so then we sit there and we think, do I? Do I? Do I? Do? Yeah, I do. Okay. Yeah, I do. And then we can move forward with expending that money. But it's like when we don't have that money buffer and it's just thought, we better be pretty sure that what we want to manifest is that we're able to focus in a way on only what we want. Because right now, the way that we focus, we focus on what we want, what we don't want, a lot of what we don't want, right? So it's like kind of a, it's not a, not a protector, but like I said, it's kind of acting as a buffer for us to practice our focus, you know? Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> that, was, that was amazing. The whole, yeah. <laughs> like the buffer about... <sighs> just started like something funny came up it was just (laughs) (laughs) like like you know we have thoughts and those become manifestations you come up with this like crazy looking creature and you just it just manifests yeah (laughs) and i'm just thinking like silly things (laughs) well yeah so so yeah that's that's crazy i don't even see that way where 
uh, putting power behind thoughts. That's something I saw my, my buddy that showed me this broadcast told me because I went through, a, through my depression. I had a lot of thoughts of suicide. And that was one of the things that came up in the training that I was able to overcome. Like, like huge. And I'm so very grateful for this training. Um, and then it came back a while back. And I had remembered about that. It's like, do not put power behind your thoughts. And I, the thought came back and it, it was like, this is ridiculous because I'm so happy. And I laughed about it. It's like, why am I thinking about this? Mm. And the thought was coming and it was a thought in a way, this is how I put it. Like I'm happy and my body's used to not being happy. So I want to put me back down, but I, I'm at a state where I, I noticed it. I noticed what it was doing in my mind. I just didn't put power behind it. Mm. I laughed at it and I let it go. And eventually it, it went away. Like also from eating healthy, I was able to you know when I went to the restroom, like that's usually happens. Like a power of the thought, you take it off that thought, you know, goes into the digestive system and leaves. Yeah. And so by not putting power behind it, by learning how to control that first, I believe now, you know, what you were saying about manifesting couldn't be achieved. Yeah. But we need to train it right now. Yep. As in like what actually we want to think about as a being aligned with our higher self. So by not putting power, too much power in creating multiple cars or creating that silly creature, you know, we get to manifest what we need to manifest to the biggest question that we all have, like, why are we here? Why do we need space travel? Why this? We're looking for answers and I'm pretty sure it's all within us and we just need to manifest it. Yeah. And, um, well, actually really quick, quick cause you mentioned this and I just, uh, you, what you're talking about, about like going to the restroom, digesting our thoughts and stuff. It's funny because, um, you know, I'm an EFT practitioner and, um, also known as tapping. And when I do like almost every time I do a session with a client, the next, because, because what we're doing is emotional processing, right? So it's like that, that's what the, the healing modality is meant to do. It's meant to process old traumas, anxieties, fears, et cetera, by tapping on the meridians of your body and making statements about the way that you actually feel to, you know, bring love and acknowledgement to them and actually process them out of your body because your body's been holding on to them. And almost every time I do a session with a client, the next day they'll message me and they'll be like, is it normal for me to like, have an interesting experience in the restroom essentially like what they're i mean that might be too that would be tmi but but but, it, <laughs> but what i'm saying is they they're like a lot of people are like yeah i really um <laughs> i like went more than usual <laughs> sorry everybody but 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 and so for me i usually am like yeah i think that is normal because it, you're processing like you're processing things out of your body yeah. like your body's literally saying okay i can let this go now you know and uh so it's interesting that that you said that because <laughs> yeah i've like really noticed that a lot. yeah to to um now that you said that just reminded um so one of the Reasons to that motivated me to let go of me and talk about how when we eat certain types of meats, or actually all types of meat, we experience their emotions before dying. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. for example, an uh, animal that got hunted down, we're eating fear. Mm-hmm. So in our system, we have food, like meats. That those are not our emotions, but we feel them because we ate them. So in our body, we have our own emotions plus emotions of an animal and then meat takes forever to process so who knows how long that animal is going to be inside you mm-hmm. and then to add on the processed food like how many chemicals so we're not experiencing our whole self emotions as a human being because we have all these factors all these uh synthetics all these other emotions from different creatures that aren't even human right so our emotions are like unbalanced so we cannot tap into ourselves in a way, we can't control our thoughts. We get depressed, et cetera. Society's affecting everything. You know, we have to do things to, you know, be in society, mm. all that. And then by eating healthy, by committing straight to plant based and transformation, like letting go, pos- uh, practicing positivity, growing, you know, 
learning more about oneself and connecting with the, and meditating as well. That's in essence healing the the mind through the body, getting mm-hmm. doing that cleanse and promoting positive podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. Uh, yeah, because that's I believe in human evolution. I believe that we're doing it right now. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I I don't know why this is popping into my head right now because it's not exactly about. Well, okay. Uh, Last night, I stumbled across this Kanye West interview from just like a month ago, I think, where he sat down and talked for like an hour and a half. And, you know, I know like the public opinion about Kanye is um, can be varied. But, you know, as I've gotten further and further in my own spiritual development, um, I have, uh, you know, when I listen to him now, and I think he's been, you know, changing a lot too. Uh, Brandon actually spoke on the podcast about how his son's friend is making a documentary with Kanye and has been like actually relaying to him a lot of the stuff that we talk about here because he's been hanging out at Brandon's house, <laughs> which is kind of interesting. Um, but anyway, so I was listening to this interview and he was talking about, you know, um, free thought and how this is like a time, it just, Man, what, why did I want to bring this up? Sorry, it's just blanking in my mind right now. But but essentially, I think it's that, you know, this is a time of, oh, I know. This is a time of free thinkers. This is a time when we, you know, we are evolving as a species. And, and, and you know, he, while I was listening to him, I was like, wow, he sounds less crazy than ever. One, because like I said, I think, you know, he's evolving. But Two, it's like I'm starting to understand what what someone like Kanye West, you know, is um, is representing in our society, and what he's representing is free thought and nonconformity, and you know, full expression and full expression of how we feel in the moment, like not 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 trying to please anyone or make sure that you know what we say is is publicly accepted. It's like you know, um, he represents this this radical like uh being that i think that we're revolving into more and more now not to say like we're evolving into people who are going to be having outbursts and rants and all these things but it's like you know what what came up so strongly for me when i was watching this interview was suddenly like we are evolving as humans and we need to support each other in our the word I want to say like in our pride for who we are because I feel like one of the biggest kind of hurdles in this evolution is our constant compulsion to kind of humble ourselves and to kind of put ourselves obviously put ourselves down we all do that a lot but also just like it's like we have this extreme sensitivity and not wanting to be too good right? Because we've all had these experiences in our lives, whether it be from school or work or just society or childhood, you know, where whether it's our parents or our teachers or our classmates or our peers who, you know, anytime we actually got a little too, quote unquote, full of ourselves or, you know, had too much pride in ourselves or kind of were too confident, it's like society, everyone around kind of put you back down or that's at least what my experience has been and um i've just been so and again i don't know why this is popping up from what you just said but i just had this kind of clear moment last night where i'm like i want to i think it's so important in this evolution to help to ex- accept people who are pumping themselves up and pump them up and pump ourselves up and practice that like practice our knowing of how Practice our knowing of our confidence, of how good we really are, of how powerful we really are, and to not cut someone like Kanye West down, but to actually see him as some, in a way, some sort of a role model in in our pride and how we should be, you know, prideful of of what we can do and who we are instead of this kind of like, oh, I'm, you know, like, like we, it's hard for some of us to even take compliments, you know, so... I don't know why I just felt really like strongly to put that out there in this interview because it's, 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 it's important. It's like a really important key, I think. Yeah, that is really important. Mostly appreciation, appreciate people for what they are doing, who they're being, even though if it's bad, being grateful. Yeah, definitely. Because even, that, 
Oh, go ahead. That, that uh, I believe that speaking about pride and all that, uh, his outbursts and all that, what if we appreciate him? Like everybody yeah. was a second like, and there was nobody hating against him. Would he be having outbursts? I don't think so. Yeah, totally. Totally. And, 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 you know, maybe those outbursts are, were warranted. Like, you know, it makes people pay attention and, it, you know, it's all, it's so interesting to just look at it from this perspective of appreciation, like you're saying, for just everything, every part of it, even the parts that we want to classify as wrong or bad. It's like, we're only doing that out of fear. We're only doing that out of, and that's kind of what I'm talking about, about the societal kind of um, fear of being different. Fear of speaking up, fear of fear of ruffling feathers, right? Like I know that one, you know, hits home for me. Mm-hmm. This fear of like causing a stir. It's like we've been taught, don't do that. Like, don't make anyone unhappy. Don't don't draw attention to yourself in a negative way. Don't say the wrong thing, right? And it's like, yeah. I, as I was watching this interview, I just was so inspired to um to not care, to try to really focus on, well, what do I want to say? It doesn't matter if anyone, it doesn't matter if anyone receives it well or not. It's like my expression, right? So mm. I think it's really kind of a radical idea to, to start thinking like that. Like, well, what do I want to express? Not what can I express that other people are going to accept, you know? Mm. Yeah. Um, just to touch on that, it would be, um, with something that just came up like how there's some basketball players that are just ridiculously good mm-hmm. there's some musicians that are ridiculously good mm-hmm. and i believe we're all that good yeah they're they're just an example of what we could be yeah and as we for example let's say a basketball player that's really really good he could sing really good he could play any instrument really good. He could do anything really good. Tap into oneself. And we're giving examples over history of artists. And as uh, right now, something that I I see in view and how producing is so easy, like music. Mm-hmm. That almost every other person, in, like in the neighborhood, there's probably like 10 music producers of any genre. Right. Because of the ease of it, of the ease of getting the software and, and starting producing music. And it's really, really easy. Honestly, I, I can make a track like in two, three hours. And <laughs> it's it's to that point, you know, like when I try to go, I love running and I push myself and I'm really good. Then I'm, I start picking up the guitar and I was like, oh shit, like this is like stepping into oneness and, and, and achieving, going towards all that with without holding back, like you say, like without the fear of, you know, causing like rippling feathers or whatever. And you get to just be and without anything holding you back, you could accomplish anything, anything you, you want. And then as you go to where you're the example for somebody in your neighborhood that that's possible too. Mm. And we're just all examples and striving. So as a positive heads, the community, we're examples for the rest of the world. What could be achieved? Yeah. And as of, uh, I hear a lot of stuff like around, like, you know, pride as well, uh, ego and mm-hmm. sticking straight to what we believe. Like, yeah, we could, we could believe on this like a hundred percent. Doesn't mean that everything else in this world is wrong. I appreciate all religions for where they're at and what they have done to achieve for us to be in the space where we're at and have what we have in this community. Yeah. And I'm, I'm grateful for, uh, governments to be where they're at right now. As, as horrible as it sounds, you know, I'm grateful for how, you know, the wars have happened to yeah. achieve where we're at right now because it's all necessary and just appreciate everything. Appreciate everybody's process. Appreciate and be grateful that things have happened for me mm-hmm. to be where I'm at. Everything is to be like we're at. So everything has meant, was meant to happen for me to be sitting where I'm at talking with you, Alexa. Mm. for the listeners to be exactly where they're at like this this was recorded june 28 2018 somebody's gonna hear it in next year in august you know yeah but it was their time to hear it it's all time and a process and 
we should not get mad or frustrated when people are not listening or they don't get it. We just, we just gotta be love ourselves and be the example for others by approaching everything to love. Like love is the highest source of energy that I believe now. Now that I'm talking about this, I remember that conversation we had on our previous recording. That was something that about love, Mm -hmm. opening your heart. That was something like a, you pointed it out. I didn't even see it that way. And I shared it with a couple of friends and they supported them big time with their relationships with uh, other people they have. What can you bring the topic back up again? I, <laughs> we talk yeah. about so many things I kind of forget, but I'll remember when you bring it up. It was, um, forgetting the context, but okay. So love back, opening your heart. So, okay. Let's say you have somebody that has hurt you. Mm-hmm. Somebody that has betrayed you, etc. It's it's a negative emotion. Mm-hmm. And you confront this person. It's something you have to do. Let us see you have to go get water and that person is there and you have a conversation. Or that person's trying to project negativity into you. And maybe not. Maybe you're just attached to how you felt before. And maybe you've both grown, but you still feel that. So For example, let's say this person is going to spread negativity into you and it'll bring you down and you come up, close off with your heart closed, protecting yourself. so You won't get hurt because you know it hurt. And in the process, you're able to shift and you're able to to come from a place of love and open your heart, open your heart to this person and say, I love you. You human being, I love in the process you're at. Uh, you, You hurt me. It's okay but I'm opening my heart anyways because I have love for all, an abundance of love. Mm-hmm. And as, as I did that, as I opened my heart, I felt everything go. And I didn't feel pain no more. I didn't feel negativity. So what you said was, um, it just opened the gate. And that negativity was allowed to flow through the heart instead of ripple back to that person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that was, that was amazing. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm remembering now instead of it, uh, that when you open your heart, the love can just flow through or whatever energy it is can just flow through. Uh-huh. And when your heart's closed, that it ricochets back, you know, whatever you're, whatever is happening, you're just kind of ricocheting that back into the universe and it just keeps perpetuating it. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And, and to something that was just coming up while you, uh, with something you said a minute ago was, um, you know, sorry, when you were talking about all the music producers and how oh, there's so many right now and there's, you know, and and talking about how even with a specific podcast, how someone might listen to this like over a year from now and it'll be what they need to hear when they need to hear it. Right. You were just mm-hmm. had me thinking about, you know, I feel like also one of the things that is so difficult for us sometimes is that we've or at least for me, I remember being raised and thinking, you know, oh, like I'm supposed to do my own thing. Like I'm supposed to be the only one doing whatever I'm doing. And, you know, then coming up against a lot of, or, you know, interacting with or or realizing that a lot of other people were doing kind of a similar thing that I wanted to do and feeling suddenly like it was futile. Like, oh, well, why am I going to do this now? Because other people are doing it. So what's I'm just a number like what's an what what's the point of just doing this when for example you could be like what's the point of just of being another producer when there's just a billion producers right like what am I going to do but it's like the coming to this understanding that one it's not about other people like it's really about you and if like making music for example producing music actually makes you happy and puts you in the flow then that's the reason you're doing it you're not doing it so that you can become famous you're not doing Mm -hmm. it so that you can get this huge following or whatever it's like the 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 only thing that's going to actually satisfy you is doing it because it makes you happy to do it and then second of all it's like you know it doesn't matter how many of anything there are in, in this universe, on this planet. There are, you're putting out a very specific frequency. So it's like the people that are resonating with that frequency 
are going to be attracted to your message. Maybe not all at once, maybe, you know, several years in the future, who knows, but it's like, don't ever, you know, I feel just so urged to say, don't ever underestimate how powerful you are, even if, you know, because because we're so tempted to compare ourselves to like the superstars of the world who have, you know, billions and billions of fans. It's like those numbers don't really mean anything because you can have just as much of an influence as that as that celebrity can have on one on on one person. Like you can change one life significantly and that life could go on to change millions of lives. Like you have no idea. Um and I just constantly am getting the message that it's not about the numbers and it's not about competing like we've been told. It's about you enjoying what you're doing and feeling aligned with your soul's purpose. And then it's about like the right people are going to be attracted to you and what you're creating and they're going to be affected by it and they're going to be, you know, they're going to actually receive it as an answer to their asking at the right time that they need it. And maybe in only a way that you can can communicate it to them. Like sometimes I can't hear certain people or certain things that, you know, maybe before in the past, sometimes like I go to Abraham Hicks for everything. And sometimes it's like it, I'm in a weird place and I can't even really hear it. And then I'll come across some random person's Facebook post that has just repositioned this, uh, what I need to hear in a different way. And suddenly I'm like, oh my gosh, okay, there's my answer. Thank you, this person that I don't even know. Wow. Like you've Mm -hmm. just really, really given it to me so (laughs) definitely yeah Yeah. and as far as like the music producing just an example it could be catered to anything like um but the beauty about this that i love and the community of producers and the rising of it is that we're average people like we have a day job we don't we didn't go to school we learned most of us learned through this for youtube and google and asking questions and when i hear anybody's sound and create a sound i'm like oh how that's so cool how'd you create it and it's just more creativity being out there so mm. by them doing this it's regular people living in a house um doing a passion so people they're the example for people to anything is possible mm. and between my friends of djs like something we talk about in this why we keep on doing that even though we don't get paid even though like we don't even charge we 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 do free events we don't want to that's not the message we're trying to say it's just message is like you you have something you want to do go do it you want to sing you you like drawing you like building things out of wood who knows whatever it is your heart always has desired your whole life i want to do comedy you want anything you just go out and do it like even if you have a nine to five, even if you still have school, there's always time. There's yeah. always a way to live yeah. your passion. Mm. So so true, and it's really about decisions, right? Yes. I mean that's that's what I'm learning. It's like if you're not doing it, it's because you've made a decision not to do it for for maybe an excuse that you feel is valid. And maybe that's something that you need to examine. Like, why is this an excuse for me? Like, why do I feel this excuse is valid? Is this mm-hmm. a story I've been telling myself? But I mean, I was saying this the other day, even not making a decision is a decision, you know, even saying, oh, well, I don't know. I, I don't know right now. Or like, I'll figure that out later. Or, That'll happen in five or 10 years or whatever it is. Like, that's a decision that you're making about how about mm-hmm. when you're going to live your life passion and when you're going to experience that. And so it's like, if you're listening to this and you've been had something like, like Jonathan said that you've been wanting to do your whole life, ask yourself, why aren't you doing it yet? Ask yourself what story you're telling yourself and, uh, and ask yourself if you can make a new decision right now and say, like, is there something that I can do to take a step closer to this? Because that will always make you feel you know, that will always light you up. And like, there always is a step towards it, you know? So. Yes. Yes. And, Definitely. and, and it's so, I, I, I can't remember if I said this with you, John. I think I said this on another interview, but it's like, I received this image a few, I don't know. I don't know. A couple months ago, I just received this image of like all these little dots moving around the planet. And it was like, People who were doing jobs that they felt like 
they had to do, right? Things that they were like, well, this makes me money. This is, gives me status, whatever it is. Okay. And they're kind of, but they're kind of not in their, their alignment. They're working for someone else and they're doing something they don't really love, but that, that pays the Mm -hmm. bills, whatever. And I see them and I see them moving around the planet and it's like they're on these really slow tracks. They're moving very slow. They're kind of like just go. It, 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 not much is happening. And then all of a sudden this vision in this vision, it shifted to new different dots and they were all like. Uh, doing things that they loved and I saw them zipping and zooming all around the planet like on these fast tracks like they were just zipping zooming everywhere you know Um, Mm -hmm. and it was moving very in sync and all perfectly perfectly around each other and intersecting with each other and everything and it just was an image that told me that was telling me you know we have this perception that well if you do what you love then you're not going to get very far like if you just do what you love you're not going to get very far and it's like that really couldn't be further from the truth because when you do what you love you open the doors to everything that you want everything that just starts falling into place and it's like we've been told that no no you just do what you love on the weekends when you have time and it's like that's a key that that mindset ensures that you're going to be moving pretty slowly in your life regarding anything you know and i just got this understanding that like when we figure out what we love and we just start going in that direction it's like you start zooming towards towards all these things and 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 it's a much more we can make so much more happen when we're all in alignment with what we love you know yes definitely yeah and every day is just amazing like that (laughs) Yeah, it is. Wait, um, you know, uh, do you, can you tell that story about, um, cause we're, we're kind of running out of time here, but I do, I do want you to tell that story about when you felt like you had that sort of death. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry. It's a scary one. <laughs> oh, sorry. But I felt like it no, was, no, okay. it's, it's not scary. It's just like, you know, death is scary. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, it was, uh, it happened because of, uh, that lifestyle I had yeah. of not eating right, working too much, producing just a circle with, without an end. And eventually this, this one night I had an experience, hard experience cause I don't know what it really it is. Um, I was laying in my bed. It was late at night and I felt this pain through my bones first. Like like by pressure uh and it started increasing and increasing and then it got to a point i was like okay this, this is hurting like my whole body and got to a point where the pain was so strong that i wasn't thinking like this is hurting i was just like holding still not trying to scream because it was night i didn't want to wake up people and i just tensed up and then I, the big one that I hurt was like a, i felt like a hand crushing my skull of pressure and Pressure's building up, building up. I don't know to what end. And, you know, like my chest is up from like punching my fist and just keeping it together. And right there, it felt like they did it. They accomplished it. They crushed my brain. And mm-hmm. I fell back into the bed and my life flashed before my eyes. I saw everything from like birth till up until that day. And then I saw the white light they speak of. And at that point, I was just like, shit, like, this is true. Am I dead? Like, is this, is this God? Like, am I here? Like, this is it? Like, just this is it? Yeah. And at a point, oh I was, I was kind of like, like, oh, well, like, cool. <laughs> uh, but then I was like, no, like, no, like, in my head, I don't know why this thought came. I was just like, God is not real. And mm. like, you know, this is not real. And snapped out of it. And I was in, in my bed laying up at the ceiling and seeing the ceiling. Uh, then again, to put it on perspective, this is all like in a second, all this happening within a second. So looking wow. up, but it felt like eternity looking up and I, I couldn't move my body, but I didn't feel that I wanted to move it. I wasn't making the effort, but I felt like if I tried to move, I wouldn't be able to move. I was just staying there, like looking and just like, I guess my body dead. And my eyes are just open. I need, I'm waiting for somebody to close them or something. <laughs> and so, you know, and that thought process then came uh, like some visions, I would call them like a glimpse, like a picture frame. Like yeah. a, a frame came up 
and it was like a, a camera like was moving slowly and it'll stop and flash again to a different part and like that so one part was like part of the universe and the planet i don't know what planet and some stars and it was so very vivid like if i was there and i couldn't see my body though it was just like like from a movie like a screen i guess seeing right like remote viewing or something yeah remote viewing and flash at a different part of the universe and flash again a different part then like the, the third flash of a glimpse that i saw was like a planet exploded whoa like destruction yeah and i was like okay the, like the first two were cool this was a little crazy yeah <laughs> and <laughs> and then after that came a different one and it was i would say planet earth just because of the nature of it it was like green grass trees it was all very peaceful the sun was setting it was a mm. beautiful beautiful moment that i got to witness and it was just a place that was untouched by humans that's what i saw mm. and stayed in that for quite a bit and faded into reality and moved my body got up started moving and yeah <laughs> wild how do you interpret now that you're i've heard now i've heard this a couple of times and it's like the how do you interpret the um the planets like do you um, at all like interpret that that whole succession of v- images in any way just curious a lot a lot has come through and i've thought about and initially i thought I was like okay maybe this is a warning like something's gonna happen mm. maybe this is you know like a warning so in a way what i saw was beautiful like the nature part that was amazing i was like we could strive to that like that was this once we could do it again um that was one thought but i guess one that i uh that comes to mind i would like to share would be that beginning of time was that nature and peace humans came and we are evolving and we get to a point where let's say like it was just peace and we got to a point where the world is gonna end because of nature the star the sun the star would you know not have life no more this is gonna be a time and then humans are panicking and um it's like oh we need to get out of this planet we need to go somewhere else Mm. and then came like a like a religion in a way like a time machine they came back and they um instated that and society came along wars came along and created urgency in us to create technology and i feel like it's just my opinion like my thoughts that came that Right now we're at a point where space travel is becoming like, and a lot of people are really smart and creating things, you know, it's fast forwarding and Mm -hmm. all of this is going on. So by creating those ripple effects of like negativity and positivity, it's increasing. So the plus and minus when we were cavemen was like, oh, we got to eat. And there's like a monster out there. And it was, I guess the threshold we would say like five plus five plus five, negative five. So then society increases so there's more factors into it so okay no so now i have a house this person is in a house i guess the factor is like plus 10 minus 10 of mm-hmm. negativity and positivity and grows and grows uh depression is higher happiness is 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 higher depression is lower and it's, it just goes so the like a like a wave sign like a waveform you know plus and minus plus and minus it's, it's increasing right and we're getting to a point where it's becoming too much and the world could explode by our, you know, melting the, the global warming and all this mm. and achieving space travel and going somewhere else. And to me, it's fear. Like we, uh, we accept that we're born and we die. Mm-hmm. And what came up for me is, is like, why can't humanity just born and die? Like, do we have to be here forever as a humanity species? Mm. You know, no, I guess and, not. And like, can we just appreciate this planet? Can we enjoy our time? Can we just live in harmony? 
we have to create stuff and further ourselves, you know? That, that's so <laughs> funny. That's like the, <laughs> that's like something I've struggled with since I was little. Like, can you enjoy this time, this time now, knowing that like something that just came up for me was and in, in my past, I had a lot of long distance relationships for some reason. That was just a trend I was in when I lived in California. Um, I constantly was like getting into these relationships that people were far away. And whenever we would be together, I remember that keep coming up for me is like, can you just enjoy this time without constantly thinking that it's about to end? Like, can you mm-hmm. can you enjoy where you are now without flash forwarding to the future to the painful part because by doing that it's like you're literally canceling out what's happening now so you're not even yes. there's no purpose of this basically mm-hmm. and um and so i feel like that's a theme for a lot of people it's like kind of obviously because like we're really all focusing on becoming present and appreciation and it's you're right you know if if we believe that we are eternal which i do and i think a lot of us do at this point we believe that we're eternal, then does it really matter in what form we exist or where we, like you're saying, it's like, can we appreciate this moment for what it is, regardless of what's going to happen here, regardless of, 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 of trying always to figure out the future? Can we just be here now and make this the most beautiful moment, you know, yes. we can. And yeah, I think, uh, I think that's like a pretty powerful vision, whatever it means. You know, for me, when you first told me that, what came up for me was like maybe the planet exploding is symbolic of us deconstructing this, this, this uh, Gaia, like this version of Gaia as people constantly I hear talking about how we're creating like Nova Gaia, right? Like the new earth, we're creating a new earth Mm -hmm. and you know, it doesn't mean that this Earth has to literally implode and then we all have to literally take spaceships to another Earth. It just means we're actually creating like holographically the new Earth. Um, yeah. Yeah. To, to, wow. To, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. So, maybe, so maybe that that like that was my interpretation. Again, it's 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 your vision. So but like oh, maybe. Man. Yeah, it's like maybe it was showing you like this earth has to deconstruct so that we can build this new earth. And maybe what you were seeing, that last vision of that peaceful place untouched by humans is actually this new earth that we're creating that is like literally nirvana that, you know, it's heaven mm-hmm. on earth. It's it's all beautiful and luscious and nature is allowed to, you know, be dominant in a way or that we coexist with it in a very harmonious way. Um, yeah. Yeah. So... <laughs> That's exciting. That's awesome. Thank you yeah. for sharing that. Um, <laughs> so, also, Jonathan, yeah, no, uh-huh. go, go ahead. Yeah. Um, something else. Yes. Something funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, last year, it's about synchronicity. Yeah. Last year, I, um, I was at McDonald's with my cousin, and the receipt came up. It was six twenty eight, and like I like, I would just put meanings behind things and just like, I'll be like, I told him, oh, look, 628's like something's going to happen on 628. That's and he's today. like, what? I don't know. I was like, I don't know. He told me, what is it? I don't know, but it's going to happen to you. <laughs> like, I was just being a stupid cousin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like, I got him scared in the bit and he was in deep thought and I was like, I just left him there. <laughs> and in his deep thought and I brought it up to him after it. Uh, so when we first had the first attempt for this, for this interview, uh, last Thursday, I, you know, when you emailed me, I was just like, like, why postpone this? Yeah, I'm free Thursday. Let's do it. Like, why choose a date? And usually I would choose a date. I'd be like, let's see what day, like, sounds good. Oh, okay. and, yeah. And I was just like, okay, Thursday, I'm open Thursday and Friday and let's do it. And then yeah. all the technical difficulties we had. Yeah. If you're listening, we had so many technical difficulties last Thursday when we were trying to record this. Like it was, it was humorous. It was yeah. at that point. But so we decided to re-record <laughs> today and start from the beginning. So okay, go ahead. So then um after that I went to work and on my way to work, I was listening to that day's uh, podcast. And he's talking about how you choose your numbers to your number. He was a numerologist. So he's talking oh, about yeah. your your number and you should set up appointments or things to do with your number and whatever and all this. And then I was just like, wait. In my head, I was like, wait, 
she agreed for next year at the same time. And I checked the calendar and it was like 6 to 88. And I was in the truck like, <laughs> no way. Like, are you serious? <laughs> so, so cool. And it's been perfect this whole time. Yeah. And I think this wow. conversation is way better than the last. We had a good conversation before, but it was very broken up. And this one yeah. actually is one of my favorite ones that we've recorded. So. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you for all of your amazing insight, Jonathan, and that little synchronicity story. I, I love that. And um, yeah, and everything that you've shared. I, 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 I loved, I love this episode. It was such a beautiful conversation. And before we go, um, and honestly, I didn't even ask you any of the normal questions that I ask people on the show because it just went so uh, naturally. And, and I kind of love when mm. that happens. So um just before we sign off, what, where, what are you, are you working on anything now that you want to put out there? And, uh, if people want to, you know, connect with you, how can they do that? Okay. Well, to connect, we could do, um, Facebook, which is my name, Jonathan Osorio. Um, will be on the podcast to yeah. spell it. Um, Instagram will be out of 89 and Yes, I produce music as well, and we're um, we're working on me and three buddies on creating this live show. And awesome. you can find us on SoundCloud. It's a it's a music label. We're gonna you know release stuff on there on SoundCloud slash Midnight Evolution. And uh, my personal one is my name again, Jonathan Osorio. But I believe you know it's a special link to it, so you could uh, J Osorio 89 after putting SoundCloud slash and for for creating, I have a, an event that I'm creating for August 11th and we're promoting drug and alcohol free, mm-hmm. you know, to get rid of that stigma with EDM music. And we're looking for support. Anybody that would love to support us in any way, we're looking for location. And we need manpower. We need promotion. We need more ideas. If uh, you want to support in this, you want to help promote, you're interested in this event, please, you know, reach out to me. I'll greatly appreciate it. And what else? So yeah, that's what's going on with music. And financially, you know, I, I have my own business and I get to own my own time and do my passions. That's what I love. And for people that want something more that are at that point that have a passion, but they can't do it because of time, because of work, you know, you can reach out to me. We uh, educate families, businesses, individuals, and in saving and providing for their future. And awesome. Yeah, it's uh, more to it. Reach out to me if you, will, you are interested. And that's as far as it goes. Uh, we do, we do have a, a ticket link out, um, for, for the event. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, actually go to, uh, facebook.com slash blur Ravens. Mm-hmm. That's the event page for, for event. Instagram is club underscore EDM to find out more about this event. And reach out to me personally. Cool. Yeah. yeah and it. Yeah. And, it, uh, you know, Jonathan's in L.A. So I think I know we have a large listener base in L.A. So, yeah, uh, yeah if you if you're into this type of music and, uh, yeah, want to want to be a part of it, definitely reach out to Jonathan and uh, Jonathan. Yeah, this was amazing. <clears throat> I'm glad mm-hmm. we took the time to do it, uh, to try it all again. And I love how it turned out. And again, thank you for, for sharing all of your, your wisdom. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Awesome. That's it for this week's episode. If you're a listener with a story to share and are interested in being featured on a future episode of this special series, you can email me at alexa at positivehead.com. 
Also, if you're craving more consciousness elevating content, be sure to check out Gaia, which is the go-to source for streaming consciousness content on the web, where you can stream an incredible 7,000 plus exclusive videos covering 5,000 years of wisdom. As you all hear Brandon constantly say, it's a daily conscious effort to maintain an elevated vibration. And if you're looking to journey deep down the rabbit hole to do so, then Gaia is the best place we know of to do it period. And you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com slash positive head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com slash positive head. Check it out. Otherwise, tune in next Friday for another P-Head Posse episode. And until then, as Brandon always says, journey well.